So I enjoy Westerns. It's one of those things I don't go out of my way to watch them. Like I will very rarely actually set out to go watch a Western, but if somebody wants to watch a Western and I find myself watching a Western, I always enjoy them. So I don't know why I don't go out of my way to watch Westerns more often, but I can't think of a Western that I've ever seen that I didn't like. All right, I have a box and I have a clue. Once home to Doc Holliday, I am called the Land of Volcanoes. Oh, and it's illegal to dance in a sombrero. Where am I? I think we're talking about New Mexico today. Didn't know it was illegal to dance in a sombrero. I don't think I've had a chance to do that yet, but I will make sure to not get arrested for sombrero dancing in New Mexico. All right, let's see what we've got. Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah, oh, this is an incredible blue. So this is linerite. This tends to come from around central New Mexico, uh, Socorro County. And what you're looking at here is basically an oxidization of chalcopyrite and galena. So you have chalcopyrite, which is a more metallic mineral. You have galena, which is a lead ore and they basically turn into this beautiful, beautiful, vivid, vivid blue mineral. Socorro County, where this mineral comes from, is really, really well known for being an area of extinct volcanoes. So you had just massive amounts of, of turmoil and geology going there. So an incredibly, incredibly rich area for mining and for the production of minerals. Let's see what else we've got. All right, another box. Let's see what's in this one. <laughs> this is fluorite from the Surprise Mine. That'd be Luna County or Cook's Peak Mining District in New Mexico. So beautiful purple fluorites. These are from a more recent find, I wanna say around 2018. You get green on the edges occasionally, but nice purple octahedrons on these. Cook's Peak District is very cool. It's southwestern uh, New Mexico and it has some of the most complete geology that you'll find anywhere, going back 2,500 million years, basically 2.5 billion years. Most of the mines are actually pretty small though. Most of them pretty shallow, only down to about 12 feet. You know, small individual claims, which, you know, similar to this in the more recent times, but still a lot of mineral wealth came out of the area. You're looking over a course of 1860s to about the 1960s, you know, some $4 million worth of ore, lead, silver, zinc, and uh, various things came came out of the area. Okie doke. Oh, okay. This is also another more modern find. So these are really, really recent. These are epido pseudomorphed after orthoclase. So here is an orthoclase crystal that is just boom, right out of the ground. This one has been replaced by epido and there's some little white spots still in it, just a little bit there you can see. So it doesn't look like the replacement was completely done there. What's so really cool here is that you have an orthoclase crystal here, very rich iron and magnesium magnesium hydrothermal fluids come through the area and cause a, I think it's propylytic replacement that causes epido fluorite albite replacement of the crystal. This only happens in an area about the size of a basketball. Any of the host rock there that's this uh, feldspar is gonna get replaced. What was so unusual in this case is that it's not just a big massive amount of feldspar, it was these really sharp euhedral crystals here. For the location here, this is more central south, Otero County, New Mexico. So another interesting thing about the crystals that they found is in some cases they got single crystals, but in a lot of cases they've gotten twin crystals and the twinning is a Carlsbad twin. So we've talked about twins a little bit where you have crystals that are intergrown with one another. A Carlsbad twin is where the crystal has twinned on the C-axis. So the C-axis is this direction of crystal growth. And you can see that it's twinned along that elongated axis there and you see how it's opposite. So you've got this way and then this way for the way the crystals are facing. So they're 180 degrees to one another. And you can see that on this little guy here too. So not only are they sharp euhedral crystals, they've got some really cool twinning going on as well. And of course, we talk a lot about the rocks here on our channel, but again, props to the miners for going out and finding these new finds. Way to go, guys. 
Okay, this one's a small one. Ah, another nice blue. Very, very nice here. So here we have a small piece of halite, blue halite from uh, New Mexico. This would be from southeastern New Mexico. So we've gone from the southwest where we were at the Surprise Mine. Now we're over towards where the Carlsbad mining area was. Over in the Carlsbad mining district over there, they mine a lot of potash. Uh, in fact, three quarters of the potash that is used in the US comes out of uh, New Mexico. So uh, there's a good chance if you're using any fertilizer that you've got a little bit of New Mexico in your backyard or out in your garden somewhere. So the halite, this is is sodium chloride. This is literally salt, uh, basically a rock salt, so to speak. And what's really neat about it from this area is this really nice blue color. So the way it gets this blue color is from the radioactive decay of the potassium salts in the nearby area. Potassium is radioactive, believe it or not. You get a pile of bananas together and wave a Geiger counter over them and you will get a reaction from it. That radioactive decay is what colors these salts blue. In fact, back in the, uh, the old days of nuclear weapons testing, they used a salt cave to contain one of the blasts when they were trying to do constructive uses of nuclear weapons. And the cave in which they contained it with the salt, they were trying to recover radioactive isotopes and typically it doesn't work because they wind up enmeshed in the melted rock surrounding it. They wanted to contain it in salt so they can then dissolve the salt to recover the radioactive isotopes. And after everything had cooled down six months later, they went in there and there were rainbow colors, blues and violets and purples of salt because the radioactivity had turned it those colors. Much safer than uh, blowing up a nuclear bomb. You can just go collect really beautiful blue halite from southeastern New Mexico. Loving these New Mexico minerals. Okay, we've got another blue one. A lot of good blue stuff coming out of New Mexico here. So here we have a very nice smithsonite, also sometimes deliciously known as turkey fat or uh, zinc spar. So this is a secondary mineralization of basically zinc oxide. So in the zinc uh, oxidization zones, you've got zinc basically converting into this zinc oxide. Absolutely beautiful color. This would be the Kelly mine, and now we're in more central New Mexico here. A lot of the times this material will be a much more greenish cast, but you can get some more pure blues, like this is just a very, very slightly greenish blue, almost like an aqua blue. You can get some very, very intense, vivid blues. One thing I like about this one is there's a nice translucency to it and just a silky chatoyancy. You can see how the light absolutely loves the surface of this mineral. It just floats right across and you get almost these little cat's eyes going, uh, going to and fro there. Beautiful going across the top. Looks very similar to hemimorphite. In fact, for a long time, they kind of thought they were the, the same thing. But you know, if you can get yourself a nice uh, specimen of smithsonite from the Kelly mine, it will definitely be a feather in your cap for your collection. Last one, let's see what we got here. Very similar color, but a little different. So let's say we got aragonite here, which technically would be more calcite. Aragonite's not stable at surface pressure, so it converts to calcite eventually. I would imagine, I'm not 100% sure, but I would imagine the color's probably coming from zinc as well. Underneath, we have azurite and malachite. So we've got basically aragonite or calcite with uh, azure malachite underneath. You can see the waviness here, so it's botryoidal formation here, and you can even see some of the bubbles where this came off of something that was underneath that was also of botryoidal form. You've got a cast underneath of the form, which is just really cool. So this would have been one of the nearby mines. This wouldn't have come out of the Kelly mine. This would have been like the Waldo mine. A lot of mines actually named after the people around. This was more of a, a graphene mine, so, you know, coal graphite types of things. But still some really lovely mineral specimens coming from here. This is yet another location. Lead, silver, zinc, many, many things that came out to just build our nation. A lot of beauty and a lot of utility coming out of New Mexico, so thanks, New Mexico. All right, so we're gonna take a closer look at the Smithsonite, because I just want you to bask in the way the light just floats across the surface here. Such velvety goodness.
thanks for joining me on a brief and short trip through New Mexico. New Mexico has over 2,000 different occurrences of minerals, so we've just touched on a very, very few. If there are other occurrences or other locales that you like in New Mexico or other minerals that occur there that you want to hear about, please let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell, and we'll be bringing you more gemstones and minerals from the 50 states soon.